It's all good if they do. And boom, we are live with Senor. Oh boy. Yeah, so the picture looks even better in the these phones, man. But how's it going, Mr. Diaz? Oh, it's going well. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. Thank you for having me. I can't wait. Let's see how many how many of your old students uh, chime in here. Uh, but yeah, just hanging out with Mr. Diaz. Mr. Diaz is a, a Spanish teacher at Evergreen Valley High School. For those of you who don't know, he's known me for far too many, far too many years. <laughs> don't want to tell uh, how many, yeah. Huh? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but uh, what we're gonna do today is just be hanging out with Mr. Diaz, just get to know him uh, a little more and see what he's been up to. So, what up, Mr. Diaz? How are you? Oh, doing well, Roman. Hi. Um... Give me the first day of school speech that you've always uh, done. <laughs> uh, for anybody joining, I see Alan just joined. Uh, he's a, a, a kind of jiu-jitsu coach from India, he, so he has no idea who Mr. Diaz is. Uh, for those who don't know, aside from the many years you've taught Spanish and have been educator and coach, um, what else? For the, the, what's the, the spiel? What's the, the story? Uh, well, it's, 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 I, first of all, I, I love what I do. I'm a teacher, and, and I've been doing it for a long, long time. And this, I just finished year 16, uh, and so looking forward to the next 16. So that's, that's, this is a very important point in my, in my career and in my life. That's awesome, 16 uh, years. But the thing that I do for what I do is that I try to almost not sell it, not just as a, an elective, because a lot of people think, oh, that's a foreign land, which is an elective, it's something that I just Spanish, gotta do, right? right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta do, um, but it, you know, it's a life skill, and that's something that, that, is, that is very important. It's something that definitely is going to broaden your horizons, especially in California. Especially in California, Huge. and that's something that I try to, to to really inculcate in the students is that you know this is important. This is something that could you know get you a job, could get you an interview. This is something 100%. that could you know send you some other places that you didn't think uh, were possible. And so so Sis that's that's my thing. Sister's a doctor. She's an MD, and it's almost like mandatory that um, they all minor in Spanish. That's the thing because they understand that. Uh, the greatest uh, demographic in California is going to be Hispanic, Latino. Not, what is the exact perfect wor uh, word? Yeah, word, either right? one of those would work. Uh, but, on but I mean, you could use Spanish when you go to Barcelona, etc. <laughs> but I think their main purpose is, you know, they don't want to have to bring in a translator every time they have a patient and so forth. They better at least be fluent in some type of Spanish, uh, at the least, right, if any right. language, to be able to deal with people uh, in California. So Michael Martinez, what up, Michael? Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, probably one of your students. You were telling me earlier, how many students you think oh talk, well talk about the power of names <clears throat> oh my goodness and, and I, I, i've been teaching 16 years total yeah i just finished year 14 at evergreen so i was i was doing numbers this morning thinking that how many students have i come in contact and it's, it's over 2100 students at least right and you know in the years that i coach then you know you kind of add those and all the activities that i've done when i've been an advisor when i've been doing clubs uh, class advisor and so it's a lot of people and so that's that, that's a cool thing that i live in this community uh, and so I, I was just a couple of days ago. I was playing soccer with some of my former students. I was really happy that I didn't get injured, uh, but, but, but happier also, also to, to have been invited because I think that that's that's what is important to me that yeah, that, you, that we're still part of the community and the students kind of think like, oh, we're going to play some soccer. I know that Mr. Diaz can play some soccer. Uh, he can at least bring, bring some oranges or something. So uh, I could do the, the role of oh, water boy. You jumped in on our alumni basketball <laughs> alumni games uh, too. Uh, man, we got so many stories that we could talk for days. Uh, but as far as is I, I remember um, obviously so you grew up in, in Colombia I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask one that I don't even know so you, you grew up in in Colombia so yeah so I grew up in Colombia I came to the United States when I was 17 years old mm -hmm. And I, my limit, I have very limited knowledge of English, and I'm still learning. English is a very difficult language to learn. And so I think that my students appreciate that, that the fact that I'm a, I'm a learner. Uh, right now, I'm also uh, trying to learn Vietnamese, and wow, that, that language is very, very difficult. I have gone through, back to lessons one through five like 20 times, yeah. and I feel when I'm stuck, I need to go back and, and kind of review that. Uh, but I'm, I'm a learner. So I came here when I was 17. I went to high school in Virginia. I went to high school in Falls Church, Virginia. Okay. Uh, then I went into the military. I was in the U.S. Navy for five years. So right, that I remember. I've been to the Persian Gulf. I uh, visited many, many countries. I had the opportunity to travel wow. uh, when I was in the Navy. Then I went to college in Indiana. I have a bachelor's in uh, secondary education in Spanish. I also learned Portuguese when I was in college, so I, sp I speak Portuguese uh, somewhat fluent, oh, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, you, you that, that's, that's the tough thing is if you don't if you don't uh, use it, you lose it. Correct. Right yeah. That way. So so that's 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 the challenge there. So um, we got we got Michael saying something around. He, uh, uh, Michael saying, "What up, Mr. Diaz? This is Michael. Has recently 
changed my last name. Okay, just want to say hello. What up, Michael? Uh, hello, Michael. Oh, we go way back with Michael too. I think I owe him a dinner. So okay. I, I think I saw him the other day and said, you know, we need to get to get together. They came and they mowed my lawn. Uh, this was many years ago when I had a lawn. You know, since the drought, there's no grass in my backyard. Uh, but you know, this is really cool. Uh, I yesterday I was down downtown and I ran into one of my former students, Vincent. Right. Uh, from I think it's oh six oh seven oh. Oh, so funny. Oh, I ran into your Target and, and your daughter says like. Oh, surprise. Dad <laughs> runs into somebody. She's the cutest. Uh, She's so like, you, you know too many people. She said something along those lines. Yeah. It was my, hilarious. My children have not adapted to that yet. And so, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a work in progress with them. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, exactly. I think somebody said to me, um, oh, Mr. Diaz teaches Spanish. Uh, how is he so popular? Why is he so popular? But I think it's much more than Spanish. Like, honest to God, I think I, I got a B once, got a C once. And if you ask me, me, I, you know, I studied hard for your test, but if you ask me what I learned today, I'm like, uh, <laughs> because you, you have to actually jump in Correct. and use it, but the relationship I built with you was much more than just uh, Spanish, you know, it, it was kind of the, you know, the out of classroom, the life stuff, the being comfortable, being able to talk to you, and I think it's kind of a mutual respect to you being in the Navy, serving right in the Persian Gulf, and um, that was probably you, know, you got to do a lot of traveling after that right after Stanford so yeah so I came to California to go to Stanford graduate school uh, I came to do a PhD in policy analysis my goal was to be a professor and after I finished my coursework after two years decided that that wasn't really uh, what I had in mind uh, you know I was the first one to go to college in my family mm -hmm. so I had no mm -hmm. idea even what graduate school was going to be like yeah. and so I since I already had a degree in teaching I said you know that's that's always been my passion right. uh, and so I came out of a uh, graduate program I finished with a master's and so I came and started teaching in Sunnyvale Middle School so I taught middle school sixth grade for a couple of years okay and then I had the opportunity to come to this new school that nobody knew what was okay. and then I had the opportunity yes I, no. Yes, I that was it. And so I came to Evergreen, and I've been here ever since, and I will probably retire from Evergreen. Yep. So that's what I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, in the distant future. I ran into the planning uh, principal at, at a Parkinson's walk uh, recently, and only he knows. He, he was kind of the planning principal. I mean, for, for people who don't know, it, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty, you see Mr. Diaz sporting his EVHS Oh, cougars. yeah, I, I noticed that uh, a lot of stuff that has cougar stuff on it. Well, it, it was a cool experience uh, to be a part of, I think, for the kids, but I don't know what kind of nightmare it was for you guys but 2004 we got half the kids in portables at silver creek yeah we got half the kids at portables at mount pleasant for what the first half of the first year or something along those Correct. lines yeah 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 and then then we finally made our transition over to this brand new um school and they had some some wise ideas like uh you know giving uh, the controversial move of i talked to mr Welch about that giving laptops to every single uh student i'm sure that made all the other uh, kids oh. feel, feel great um that didn't that didn't last too long yeah that, that that laptop for every student i think that was a, it was a good idea i think that it wasn't fully developed it was a pure uh, poor execution i think right. uh and so because you you can't just like give somebody something and be like you use it and figure out how to do this and so there wasn't really a whole lot the of housekeeping that. process correct and, yeah and so the that repairs was, that, that, that was, wasn't evident at all and you know and they didn't look into the finances because you know uh, technology gets outdated quite quickly so they, right. that's, they didn't look down the road uh, but i did like the small school concept and in the sense that you were uh, with your own group, so you had yes, you yes. had a smaller group. You got to know your students a lot better, and I think that's where Michael comes in now, uh, because Michael was one of those kids back in the day right. uh, that you know that you got to know, and 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 every teacher uh, had an, a group that they advised, and the idea was that you were supposed to move up with them, so that kind of played the role of the counselors. Uh, which is hard because you know we don't get you know counseling is, is a separate profession and so I, I like the idea and so i picked the group even though they didn't have foreign languages as one of the people that could pick it but i i wanted to be part of the community right that's always been my idea is that and are we thinking of the same thing the uh so they did basically they divided it up into four, four schools four schools yes. so we you know had like certain uh one was global economy i remember one was hu human something yeah but humanities humanities uh -huh. but yeah uh, but essentially they're gonna have the same requirements obviously to graduate still and then through that you were assigned a group which you were talking correct. about correct right? so you were you were assigned a group of I think like 20 or 30 kids and you will see them every day and you advise them 
Uh, and so that was that was what you got to know the students. Uh, these days, you know, that's much more difficult to do because we have grown so so large. And but to, so, to our credit, we I mean, we were trying trying to be very experimental. Maybe correct. Maybe too experimental. I right? mean, it was a good idea. I think that it would, it would be great if we could have, we could have developed it more and, and keep it going. Yeah. Uh, but Evergreen has always been a great community. I, I love I love where I live. I love being involved. I love that my children go to our schools. Uh, so I'm I'm a strong believer in public education. Uh, my little girl is uh, Millbrook right now, and I won't mention her name because she will probably kill me when she sees down the, this down the road. <laughs> uh, and my son is going to go to Quimby, and then a couple of years later, he's going to come to Evergreen with me. And so I love I love being part of the community, and I think that I, I grew up in Colombia uh, at a time where teachers were really integral part of the community. I mean, that was you saw them all the time. It wasn't like yeah. there were just these people who just came to your classroom and then left. And so we will, you know, we will see them on the market. We'll see them at the movies. We'll see them at the soccer game. And so I, I try to kind of replicate that because I felt like my teachers in Colombia mm. were really part of the community. They really were involved in a lot of the projects. And, and so I like that. I remember the other day you, you called me and said, hey, said, yes, I got this project with, with the San Jose. Was it San Jose project? San Jose it? project. Yeah, it was and, a nonprofit. And so I, I, I love hearing that. I love being part of that because I yeah, think that, you, uh, that cool. uh, you know, that's, that's almost a responsibility that we have if we are members of this community community mm. we need to find a way to contribute and to make this community better and so it's yeah. not totally altruistic for me uh, because I have something to gain and that is you know that my kids grow up in, in an awesome community I, I right. love going out for walks late at night uh, and right. kind of looking around and thinking like this is this is an amazing place to live and so I work very hard to make sure that Evergreen uh, High School is the best that, that it can be not right. just for you know my children but you know for everybody who is in the community right and, and a lot of people come out of these great middle schools like Quimby Oak, Shiboya and for that reason, they think, okay, we immediately lose a lot of people to different private schools. But uh, I think people completely g gave Evergreen a chance to be very surprised of, you know, for a public school. We shouldn't have to say that for a public school. Correct, correct. Shouldn't even have to say that. It's, uh, it's a great school, and I think surrounded by a very diverse and a great place. Um, but uh, so you gave uh, uh, coaching a try a little bit with, uh, yeah, with soccer. I, no, but, but the key here is I can relate to this where you did it also in 04. So during a time where it's crazy, you talk about chemistry and like basketball, what I went through was you got uh, basically kids in eighth grade uh, summer. They're going into freshman year. Uh -huh. We had some sophomores. And you got to have a varsity team uh -huh. oh, and yeah, you got to yeah. have a JV team. And in some sports, I mean, it's doable. When you think about football, you think about wrestling, you're like, okay, we're going to get these kids killed, right? Yes, yes. Um, but I think the beauty of it is like anything in life, we get our butts whipped, we get our butts whipped. But then anytime you start, we all hit our junior year, no seniors, but we've been the same group essentially, Correct. which you don't get in any other uh, high school people move on. Uh, then all of a sudden in basketball, we, we, we started winning it and we started turning heads and people were trying to understand why. And essentially it was chemistry. We, we, we had Correct. been around each other. And then in the game of soccer, of course, chemistry passed the pass. Is, oh, definitely. I mean, that, we went through the same process because you're right. I mean, we have kids who were very young. And so in our third year, we won the championship also that okay. that year. And and it was and it reminded me, I was thinking about it this morning. It was reminded me. Uh, we won in oh in oh seven. It was oh seven. Oh seven. We won the championship. Nice. Uh, and so three four years down the road when we started, uh, and and it was really interesting because it reminded me of th speaking of basketball, the Pistons of two thousand four, <laughs> where they didn't have any superstars. Yes, you know, yes, like yes. They, won they had the people, worm. They had Dennis yeah, Rodman. Yeah, and and they were kind of like, who are these people? And, and so that was, that was the. That was kind of the idea that we had a team that we worked together. That Alejandra Moses, Senor Diaz. Hey, what's up? <laughs> and so I, I love that. Uh, you know, and, and coaching brought a lot of joy, uh, a lot of pride in our, in our neighborhood because that's, you know, when we made it to CCS, we would go and play with the private schools and they, they have a different pool. They can, they can select from basically the whole, the whole city and outside of the city. So for a neighborhood team to be successful, that was, that was pretty cool. That was pretty right. neat. Uh, but think, you know, now that I have children, and I couldn't dedicate time to to, to soccer because oh, it's coaching man. is it's a lot of time. And I, I underestimated. Uh, put a lot that, of effort. I helped out Fernandez at Andrew Hill when uh -huh. I when I came back, and I was like, okay, it, it'll be an assistant coaching gig. It'll be it'll be fine. I could do that and balance two jobs. With this. <laughs> uh, it was just in an insane commitment. Correct. Aside from from traveling, I mean, you got your practice schedule. You got so many things, and it got to a point where you have to kind of be honest with yourself uh -huh. right and that I think that was my biggest problem early on is you think you're being productive by doing so many things but essentially I've learned that 
you're spreading yourself thin. You, Correct. Ha Correct. you have to have the patience of mind to actually pick one thing and dig that hole deep. And, and do it well. Uh, but uh, for us today, I'm like, wait, I I'm just going to do one thing? I, I can do that. I can do this. We're in a multitasking world. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what happens is you end up being crappy at all of them, right? <laughs> uh, and and that, that was the biggest, uh, uh, I think, kind of turnaround for me and important for everybody else who agrees out there. Um, so what was the experience that... Uh, Stanford like you like that you're fresh out the Navy <clears throat> well I, I, I had I got to Indiana University for undergrad oh, that's right, that's right, and that's right. so when I came to Stanford uh, it was a lot of work but I think that I worked very hard to to get into Stanford uh, because you know they have really high standards and I have experience doing research so when I came so it wasn't necessarily like a fish out of water kind of experience right uh, just but another I, level yeah it was just a completely different level and you know the expectations that they had there is that you be working you know 20 hours a day and, and it seems like hyperbole but it truly that's kind of like you're married to the program right uh, because that's the kind of level of commitment that they want and that you have to pursue and so uh, after doing that for two two years, I, I didn't feel like I, I wanted. I, I just wasn't getting back what I thought I was going to get back, and right. and that's when you had to really analyze and say, you know, is this what I really want? Do I want to do this for the rest of my life? And oh, this this was deciding with the PhD. Correct. So, so, so you, you, so you when mentioned I, earlier before I started it. writing my thesis, I just thought, nah, I, I just don't think that this is what I want to do. And also when you. When you become a professor, uh, at the beginning, you have to travel a lot. You have to yep. go to different places, different states, uh, because they give you just a two-year contract, a three-year contract. Right. So it's kind of like being in the military, and I really and, didn't want that for And you just family. got out of that from the Navy, Correct. the and Persian I just, Gulf. Yeah, I just uh, got out of that because of that. And I Did just you have didn't, a kid at that time? Uh, well? When I was at Stanford, uh, my son was just born. That's uh, huge, right? And so I, I, You're going to just take off? Yeah, right? and yeah. start traveling, and, and so yeah, it changes it was, everything. I'm sure. Correct. I, I mean, it, it was a great institution. I learned a lot from that, uh, and I think that you know you you learn from all the experiences you have, uh, and you know, uh, having a, a degree from Stanford in this area is is is, is, is valuable to uh, to a lot of people. And right. but but for me, that doesn't really define who I am. I think that my actions and how you know I conduct myself and the mm. expectations that I set for myself or my students. So you were talking about what I said to the students on the first day is that my spiel has always been that you're going to work really hard for whatever grade you get <laughs> uh, because I think that that's what's important. I think Set the bar high right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. From the day one. I you're all going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, 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 no, because you work hard. There's no way. I never no, I had a student that. That, that worked hard and didn't achieve uh, a level, a, a high level of success. Right. And, and so that's the thing that, that I'm very clear is that I say I'm going to work hard for you mm. uh, and that's a good thing and a bad thing because you know if I'm working hard my expectation is that you will do the same and Let me so, ask you a random uh, question uh, what, uh, what do you think about the standardized <laughs> test and that whole shindig I, I mean I, I, interesting right I think that we divert so much energy to, to those things and, and it really takes away from the learning process I think that kids are they get, rid of the, they get rid of that high school exit exam bull stuff, bull crap, or how's that going? Uh, that... I, I, yeah, I think that, that that's being faced out here. For I okay. think that we we got out of that. And for us, it, it, we we get so jaded about it. It's kind of like, oh, here's another round of testing. We're gonna lose. X amount of days a game, you know, on this, and so from, I think, from what I want to teach, correct, from the things that I want to do, the things that I think are important for my students, uh, and so my goal for me is to try to, you know, provide a strong foundation. So mm. even if you don't practice it every day, uh, one you're, day you're ready for it. Correct. If you have the opportunity yeah. again, I, I have so many students that come back to me years down the road and say, I didn't realize how much I remember. I went to Paraguay, and uh, you know, I was in Cabo, and I just uh, had a student just last year who said, you know, I was at the post office, and uh, a family needed help uh, filling out their passport uh, uh, forms and I was able to help them and I understood, the basics. I understood what they were saying to me and I was able to communicate so that's really cool I mean right. that's, that's 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 one of the things that really uh, kind of makes my day when I go oh yeah that, that, that makes sense right. and I just want them to I, I want everyone to like see that at the beginning but you know when value you're later, 15 right? 16 yes, you go yes. and eh, you know I'm just gonna try and get an A uh, <laughs> and so so that's what I try to do trying to sell us the skill uh, that is really it's really crazy. important it's crazy how with language um, you got to dive in. You got to be thrown in the water. Correct. Would you say that's the quickest way to well, know if you learn or not? Well, you need a foundation, like you but said. But you need right? a foundation. I think that it has, it has to make sense because I think that when you are really young, you you can you can kind of interpret meaning from that. Well, as you get older, things don't come as easy. Believe me, me learning trying to learn Vietnamese. At my age, I, I should have started, you know, three decades ago, four decades ago. 
Uh, but, but that's yeah, what my, it is. my Spanish sucks, but when I went to Barcelona, Ibiza, all that for about two weeks. When I was done about there, I was like, man, I I can I picked up some Spanish. And but before cool I thing. before I actually got there, it would have been like no chance. Correct, uh, and, so, and that's the really cool thing is that this is this is a tool. This is something that you can really use, and it's something that is going to really provide you with a lot of opportunities, not just in the professional field, but on the personal field. I mean, I have students who uh, are dating people from you know Argentina or Spain, and they're able to communicate. They go they go meet the families mm. when they Doesn't come and visit. Learn. Yeah, and they so, gotta meet so, dad. so it provides a different perspective. But you know, learning is always something that is so yeah. cool, and so that's that's why I teach because I I feel like I need I want to be learning all the time. Yeah, that's that's really fascinated me too. I, I was reading this 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 pyramid that simu that reading is actually one of the the least ways to actually learn. The top of the pillar was uh, simulation, as in like video games, oh, right? really? or depending on what you're doing. If you're a pilot, pilots have those pilot simulators, uh -huh. and then second to the first was obviously actually doing. Correct. Right. Correct. Um, so it doesn't matter what it is. This was Robert K Kiyosaki. It was a, a cash flow board game. He created kind of like uh -huh. Monopoly because it says that the highest way to learn is to actually simulate if you can if it's something that's correct, relatable correct. and that reading is actually at, at the bottom above that was actually writing uh -huh. things out but that's always just fascinated me uh, of the pillars uh, uh, of that so um, soccer, soccer didn't hurt you too much I remember you being sore uh, a few times getting in there uh, with them let's see so I, I wanted to ask you why exactly Spanish out of all the Languages, obviously, you're from from Colombia. It was true to you, you. But but I guess from an articulate essay, deep level, you felt the strongest. Your strength well, I, I, when I went to college, uh, I I had no idea what I wanted to be. I mean, I think that a lot of people know oh, sure. from the get go that half the oh, people on here feel the same way. <laughs> oh, how how no idea. But for me, I really had no clue. I was I was very interested in working with people. I, I knew that, uh, so I knew that much. So I I contemplated, you know, going to medical school. Uh, but then I was like, oh my, it's going to be a long time, you, uh, you know, because I didn't graduate from high school, uh, which is interesting. Uh, and so I went, I went to the Navy without having a high school diploma. I got a GED while I was in the Navy, and then that's, that's how I got to college. And so, so education, uh, you know, in my formative years, uh, you know, I wasn't a really good student as I could have been. But when I got to college, mm -hmm. after being in the Navy, I, I realized that, that, that I could be really good at this. I was right. really good at learning, and I like learning. And so after being in the military, college was super easy. Right. Uh, I remember uh, when I was signing up for classes uh, that you, you had to be 12 hours, uh, uh, 12 credits to be mm. full-time, mm. and you could go up to 20. So I would take 20 credits uh, because it was the same price. Right. And so I love that. I love that you could go and just pick the classes that you wanted, something that was interesting. I took uh, a lot of classes for fun. Like I took bowling twice. <laughs> and so every time we go bowling with family, I just... I just kill everybody because I took classes. Uh, oh, speaking of family, your wife's uh, a teacher. My right? wife's also an educator, yes. What is, that, what is that like? People always say, you know, when you have the same occupation, it's not a good thing. But I'm sure with teachers, it's a lot different. Those, that's when you put, you know, like two doctors in the household is not a good thing, that type of thing. How's it been for you? I'm sure it only makes you better. Oh, uh, I think that for us, it's, it's worked out uh, quite well, actually, because I think that we get to understand each other's days. And right, so, right. you know, when you go and you and you say, oh, I had a, had a hard day, and you can explain it in words, but I think when you... And you explain you, each other yeah, and, when, when and be like, okay, relate. okay, my day, my day wasn't as bad as yours. <laughs> <laughs> and so in comparison, you know, my, my day was good. No, but I always have so many so many good experiences, so not, not really a whole lot of bad days. Rishi. <laughs> oh, Rishi, Joy, okay. And, what up, Rishi? Hey, Rishi. Uh, and so, so we we talk shop. I mean, and so at, at you know at the end of the day, when you know the kids are put to bed, at the, you know they get read to. Uh, you know, we just kind of like, how was the day? And so we always very focused on, on community and you know how mm -hmm. do how, how do we look for opportunities? She mm -hmm. was just recently uh, at a conference in Phoenix for a week, uh, so she, when she came back, she will be able to do a better job as an educator. So, that, so the, I, I love I think, that. I think that that's so important. Like. Uh, in whatever endeavor, they have those trade shows, they have those exhibitions, and everybody goes, ah, why well, am I going to pay to go do that? They're just making money. Well, but you'd be so surprised. And, and look at whoever's the best in the field. They're doing. They're going every year. Yeah, yeah so, you, have to, you have to work you, at it. What I can't stand is there's some people that go, oh, there's no point in going there. It's going to be the same stuff as last year. No, you always uh, I, I think that, Yeah, I think that's a loser's mentality because you, you take yourself out of the environment from whatever you're doing. And this could be whatever. If you're in fashion, there's a fashion trade show and expo. But the amount of networking you can do in uh -huh. one instant and you'll see all the top dogs they're all there right they respect knowledge to a point where they're not 
playing games and you could think of 20, 30 things that you're literally on the fly back that you can apply to. And this happens in the subway world. I'm sure this happens in the teaching world, yeah. in the, the, the real estate world. So I think I think obviously that knowledge far outweighs getting that, that fresh perspective and whatever the, the fee is for that year. Uh, you know? And, so and, cool just, and just, just growing and learning is, is, is exciting. So that's, that's why I teach mm. uh, because I think that I appreciate uh, the success that you feel with learning, and even though I've been in this country for many decades, uh, I sometimes I, I kind of catch myself thinking. Uh, so if I'm in a public place in an elevator or something, and mm. some people are speaking English, and I go, "Wow, I understand what they're saying," and it's really interesting to me because, because I, you, you, <laughs> you didn't have that. Did Correct. You? So so growing well, up, Columbia, I didn't have was, that, yeah. and so so that's that's the thing that is really exciting is that I, I picked Spanish because I, I love the language. So mm. so it wasn't as, as simple as oh I speak Spanish, I should teach Spanish, mm. but it's such a beautiful language. Uh, it's spoken for so many people. Uh, and it really, it really changes your perspective on how you look at the world and how you look at your own life when you learn another language. And that's something that I think that Americans don't really appreciate is mm. that, you know, when you learn another language, it, it just changes you completely for yeah. the better. And so I love teaching. I love going to work every day. And over the summer, this summer, I didn't work. Mm. Um, but I was, I, I was still looking at lessons. You know, how can I make this better? How, mm. uh, you know, how can I introduce a vocabulary better? How do I make this connection so students can? And I always ask for student feedback. And and you know that that could be dangerous sometimes when you ask you know people what do you think mm. or what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but you got to be prepared for that, and you got to realize that you know if there's something that I'm not doing well, then mm. I want to know about it right. so that I can do something about it and, and change and it. And the more you know it, when you know it so well. I feel the more creative you can be on how you correct, correct. regurgitate it. So it, nothing's going to change for you. You're going to keep continue learning it. But the only thing you're gonna, you're going to find new ways to actually teach it to another, which they don't even know it's happening on the other end. But they're like, wow, he approached that in a different way. Um, or you could just throw a packet at them. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean the, the thing about learning is that there are many ways that you can learn. There are a lot of people who say, you know, I learn a lot when you give me this huge packet for me to just fill uh, in the blanks. Uh, some kids will say, you know, I learn a lot when I hear it. Uh, so I do songs, I do crossword puzzles. I do kind of hands-on, hands-on activity. So I'm always thinking. Well, that's uh, true. You also uh, do a visual. And I, I'm trying to be creative. I don't. I don't feel like I'm very creative at all. But sometimes, like uh, I, I watch uh, a YouTube guy that fill his house with like balls, and he did like this. Uh, Who's this? Know, was it the gumball thing? Uh, I can't remember which guy it was, but he had like this huge room with, with balls everywhere, and he like threw himself and like lost himself in this. And I was thinking, <laughs> how cool to do that? And I was thinking maybe I can do that and to a smaller scale, of course, because I don't have the resources to buy, you know. Tens of thousands of balls, and so right. I went out there and bought this, this plastic balls, and I realized I really didn't do my math because I did, I wasn't able to afford very many of them, right. and so I, I was able to do like a kiddie pool, and so my right. kids will jump in there and balls will go everywhere, and so my wife said, you know, at some point you need to do something with these balls, mm. and so I said, well, I can't like throw them away, mm. and so I thought, well, let me do like a Scrabble, so I came out with this idea to put a letter uh, in hey, each Jimmy. ball, and 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 so they do kind of like. Uh, uh, kind of like a Scrabble idea, so I give them the clue in in, in, in Spanish, and okay. I'm thinking of this word, and they had to kind of run and look for. The, and so it's hands on, and the kids, you'd be surprised the high school students actually like that because yeah, I was they're thinking right. they're not going to like that because it's kind of a like childish game. Right. Uh, but really, they really liked it, and so that's also making a connection, right? So you're breaking uh, the norm, right? They're not correct, sitting, correct. Sitting and so, chair, so, 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 so I'm always trying to do things that I'm thinking like I was trying to do something with frisbees last year, and I actually went to the PE department and said, "Can I borrow your?" They had like a frisbee golf goal, right? Uh, right. And, and so I I. I, I and quite finished developing that, thinking, how can I do that? Do I do it like with sentences, construction, and so you know? Put were were they together. cool about that? See the, the level of bureaucracy. I'm sure. No, I think that once, you. and that's that's where we go with talking about relationships. You know, but right. when you try to get the, the bureaucracy out of that, because uh, mm. you know you don't want to be doing paperwork to borrow. You know, I just go to the teacher and say, hey, if you're done with that, can I use it? And they're so cool. I think that you get to know the uh, because some of us have worked there for so long that you, right. they know that you know they know that I'll take care of their equipment. Right. Uh, and so that's the thing that is really cool about our our school is that there's there's a lot of sense of community yep. uh, between a lot of the teachers and a lot of, we have a lot of teachers who work really really hard and awesome. so awesome. so that's that's good when you come to work hey, you know, oh she's told me miss martin retired is the fanchulo still there fanchulo is still oh, there man. yeah, if, yeah. If we would have fanchulo here oh right now, that would be a riot actually, I, actually think ah. i think with fanchulo sometime before the school oh yeah you gotta so, you have to connect me with him yeah because i'm thinking over he, one he's, of he's the reason i became a conspiracy theorist with jfk oh. and all this <laughs> stuff like you have no idea the effect he had uh, on me he's uh, oh, but you make those connections i mean i think that that's that's the thing is 
that that uh, that learning can be very exciting, uh, and yeah. that, and that's the thing that I try to do with my students is to try to provide all these connections. It's kind of like uh, we're talking about names and how many students I I gone through all these years, and mm -hmm. and I probably don't, I don't. Of course, I don't remember all of them. Uh, because so at least twenty one hundred. Some, some some of them you you have a stronger connections, right. and so that's what it is. It's the same thing with vocabulary. If you make this connection, whatever the connection, or however silly it may be, uh, oh, you remember you, it you're able to retrieve it. And so the more connections sure. you make to knowledge, the easier it is to retrieve because it is in our brain. And so, mm -hmm. uh, for example, I had a few years ago a student came back after many many years, and I knew that she had been my student, and and I and I was I was thinking like I should remember this this kid's name, and of course she was an adult uh, by the time. Uh, and so I said, you know what? Write your name. Write 20 names on this page, of, uh, this piece of paper, uh, and, I'll I'll, and I'll pick your name. Because you're matching with the face. Correct. And yeah. so I was looking at the names, and I was like, this is you. And uh, and it was really, you know, because <laughs> so I had not forgotten. I just, I, right. you know, whatever connection I had made to her name, it, it was severed, and so it wasn't as strong as it used to be. Because you know, I had not seen him for you know mm. six, eight years. Uh, and so, so that's what it is. Is that knowledge? Once you put it in long-term mm. memory, you should be able to retrieve it. So you just got to make strong connections to it. And you know, I love teaching language. Uh, I love teaching Spanish because it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with the kids, and you probably mm -hmm. have some good memories. Uh, you times. know, whether it was you know, not we, we were half of us. What half of us were a year younger than us that were in our classes? Because that was an interesting time, right? With all our bell schedules and everything. Yeah, and lots so, of changes. So yeah, Morgan and the rest of them obviously a year younger, but we're in the same uh, classes. So, uh, but it was nothing, nothing but great times. You remember the thing I was telling you about um, Sweden? I think when we were. Uh, eating uh, uh, lunch about how they kind of were second to last in education and then they ended up moving up to first and I think it was Michael Moore's documentary trying to figure out exactly why mm -hmm. and the two things that they did was eliminate uh, homework and increase uh, uh, outdoor activities and, and, and recess and I think that was for um, from high school all the way down and they saw that it actually improve their standardized yeah. test and he was curious so well you just let them run around outside it's like no if they want to climb a tree they climb a tree but when they come back we just we talk correct, about correct. what they learned when they were climbing a, a, a tree what, what, are, what are your thoughts uh, on that uh, yeah I know, I know it's because obviously you're open to trying new things right I'm open to trying new things and I think that uh, sometimes that decisions are not made exactly. based on research and I think that yeah. that if, if you have research that says you know homework is it doesn't make any difference uh, right. For some reason, we continue to do this, right. uh, and so we're kind of stuck. Uh, and, and change is difficult. People, people are very reluctant to to change anything. That was that was the next thing I was going to ask you. It's probably most likely the powers of be correct that uh, wouldn't be open. For example, to that there's and... plenty of research that says the students uh, should start the day a lot later in the day. Right. And and you know that seems like a simple thing. You know, instead of starting at eight, let's start at nine, nine thirty, so the students will be more that's alert, another, more yeah, focused. That's, no, that's another thing. I was uh, doing, because yeah. for me, as a teacher, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, you know, right. whether I get off at 3.15 or 4.15 or 5.15, mm. you know, I adjust accordingly. And so it seems like something should be easy to do. Right. Uh, for some reason, the mechanism is not there for change. And even, even if we don't want to do it, what kind of test trials and methods are we doing year after year to slowly start building this research before we pull the trigger and implement something, Correct. right? The, the answer is nothing. Absolutely not. Correct. So. Yeah, because it, it, it's just kind of the people just dig their heels in and go, you know, we're not going to... Huge rants. And you're at DS. You go, Roman. <laughs> what up, you? Uh, hi. Uh, so the, my, my Just Curran, you deserved it probably. <laughs> just Curran says he failed me. I'm, I'm not even going to blame him. Uh, but, I try uh, not to fail anybody. Uh, and, and so my daughter, for example... You have to really earn it. <laughs> yeah, my daughter didn't have any... Just we still love you. Uh, my daughter didn't have any homework this year uh, in second grade. And I remember going to the beginning of the year meeting and parents were up in arms, like, what are you going to do instead? Uh, are you providing any packets? Can we, they're going to fall behind. And it was really interesting that one... I need something a baby said to him uh, when he comes uh, home. And it was really, it was something really interesting that one of the parents actually said, you know, how is my child going to be prepared for AP classes in high school? Uh, I, second grade. You know, I, had that on, I had that on my list. I had that on my list of dealing with parents. And, and I said... Two different uh, worlds, right? Because dealing with parents when, and for those parents who are listening, when uh, you're a coach, and then dealing with parents, I don't know which one's worse. Yeah. Uh, dealing uh, with parents when it's you know the back to school night, um, etc. You either have those parents that are that are working so damn hard they can't even show up to anything, uh -huh. right? And then you have those parents that are way more involved than they should be on a level that they're scrutinizing, ca you know, causing drama in that way. <sighs> You you've been in the military. Yeah, I don't yes. have to tell you on how how to deal with that. But um, what what are your thoughts there? At least for any parents that. 
Well, for me, I think the, the key is communication. And I yes. think that, that if you are very clear in your expectations and you communicate that, right. uh, I think that I have very few problems. And, and, and I think, I don't know if that's by design or this, the lack of the draw. Uh, but I think that when a problem arises, I have no problem meeting with a parent and sitting down and saying, this is what's happening, this is what I expect, this is what this is the result, and, and this is how we can change things. It's probably so important to do that with the kid there in correct, front, right? Correct, correct, correct. most of the time when that type of stuff does happen. No, no, no. I, 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 was, I was a, a big spoiled uh, complainer early on, so if I didn't get my way, and I'm sure many kids will do, they'll go to mom and they'll be like, uh, you know, uh, dad, he cut me, he's racist, right? Or mom, this teacher's, you know, acting this way uh, uh -huh. to me. And I love that my mom was, was, uh, was like, well, there's got to be a reason for it. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to call him. I'm not going to help you out. Go figure it out. And yeah, at the and time, I, I was, you know, almost like pissed her, like, oh, you don't even care, this and that. But in my mind, I looked back at him, I was like, oh, she's awesome. She didn't want me to be soft. She, you know, and she uh, wanted to push me, and, and she probably knew me better than anyone else. Like, Correct. I mean, yeah, I, there's two sides to every story. But, okay? but, it, but everything boils down to communication, I think, that, that I think if you allow both parties to kind of have their say, and then mm -hmm. you say, okay, this is how, uh, you know, things Medias, are going to, yeah, correct, how things yeah. are going to progress from here. Uh, and so that's, that's what is key. So I try to be very clear. Uh, that's why I, I give my students a, a test. Uh, on the second day of school, uh, and most of them fail it so miserably, uh, and that's kind of my kind of me ringing the bell and saying you're not, you know, you you went ten weeks without doing anything with Spanish. This is the result of that. Uh, and anyone who's played an instrument, anyone who's been an athlete, knows that when you go that much time not doing anything, and so the thing, the same thing applies to the brain. You had mm -hmm. to you had to keep it going, and and so and dealing with rejection or failure, I think is huge. I told my nephew, you got cut from his middle school team, and I told him, so did I. And I played college ball. I was like, but you will not, I'm telling you right now, you will not be that person who's going to grab your dad and go talk to him. Uh, a, that's not going to make things uh, mm -hmm. any better, and that's not how you respond to situations like yeah. that in life. So ask yourself, what did you do? And I told him straight up, you probably were supposed to get cut. So you probably started working out three weeks before you heard about uh -huh. tryouts. So my question to you is, how are you going to respond now? Correct, correct. How, are, are, you gonna, are, are you going to pout? Are you going to moan? Are you going to give up? Are you embarrassed that other people saw you? Who, who cares? You can respond even though season's not until the following year and start working right now. Correct, right? Right, correct. And that, that's the way to earn respect without... Um, running your mouth and I feel that that translates in so many ways I'm sure you'd agree uh, to life and, and I think that was so important and he got he got on it then because there'll be no denying when that coach sees that you've improved Correct. without saying any words that man you've really improved you know um, and there'll be many other opportunities I but think the majority that, will do the opposite of what I just correct, said correct correct right? well I mean because you know as human nature you try to take the easy path right uh, and then and, and with parents Emotion before logic with any humans for some reason. Even if it's logical, we always choose emotion Correct. first, right? And Correct. when it comes to your child, that's why I threw Mama Lion on what I said <laughs> to you. She feels she has to respond, uh, not my baby, this and Correct. that. And I, no, and I just hope the parents And, and I understand that. that. I think that composure. every parent should definitely advocate for the child. There, right. there's, there's no problem with that. Uh, but again, we go back to communication. Why was the expectation? Why wasn't it met? And I think if you had those things said uh, very clearly from the from the go, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then, then that kind of minimizes all of that. And again, like I said, I haven't had a whole lot of problems where I go, man, I, I'm dreading going because I love going to work. I love having the, the interaction with the students. I have them learn and come back and be like, oh, I feel like I learned so much. Or I didn't realize that I could do this with the stuff that you taught me. And so, and for me, one of the biggest things is to to see the the hey, kids hey, that I Suki. Miss. Uh, Sook, she just uh, she's a professor of a college in India, so I'm sure she can relate to everything. Uh -huh. so, I apologize, I I cut you off there, but uh, but I think that uh, I too I agree with everything that you're saying. Any bad uh, any bad experiences with uh, uh, on the soccer field? I'm I'm probably killing you right now. It's so hot. <laughs> we're we're gonna move five feet forward, so Mr. Diaz doesn't pass out. <laughs> heat exhaustion. Yeah, heat exhaustion. <laughs> This will probably help, right? There we go. Sorry, dudes. <laughs> Taking good difficulties. The sun came We're out of adjusting. nowhere. It came out of nowhere. <laughs> All right, we're <laughs> back. <laughs> Uh, negative experiences? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't feel like I had anything where I felt like, man, this is a terrible day. Uh, right. You know, you had setbacks, and you, you know, one of the things that was frustrating towards the end of my coaching career is that the kids were not committed. 
and so I wouldn't have enough players to really do any any kind of substantial training, and and that was that was difficult to deal with because I think that I didn't have that. That I didn't expect that to happen to right. have kids, you know, who make the varsity team to not show up to to a practice, and right. so so that's the one thing that, that was difficult. Or grades an issue. Correct, so correct. Uh, but in terms of the grades, I always kept an eye on the kids and and you know communication with the with the teachers when something happens, you know, let me know so we could do this. And if you didn't do your work, then you know you don't you don't deserve a spot over here because there's someone who is doing everything that they need to do in order to be here. Mm. And so you know I, I I've been very blessed. Uh, that I have a lot of good memories. With with uh, when I coach, when I advise. Now, those going to be the, the good groups, the bad groups as the years go on, and you're going to want to do your best. I'm sure it's tough because sometimes you feel like, okay, is it me? Is it them? How do I mold them? How do oh, I, it's never me. How do I? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the challenge of how do I get through to them. Uh, I'm sure one thing I'm going to say is if I ever go back into coaching, I think the the X factor is really hard to do is when you build a solid year-round program, which is such a commitment from your life, uh -huh. too. But when I look at, okay, what did Fernandez do when he came in? Um, no matter what, uh, even if there wasn't a, a spring league, he would find one, grab practice jerseys, uh -huh. whether it was even, uh, uh, he's retired now, so even if it was against the rules or not, he'll find the summer league for oh, us to yeah, go yeah, to. Yeah. And um, this uh, principal Olympian, uh, the Gilroy High School is such a powerhouse in wrestling, and I asked them, and he said it's the community, and then year-round programs. Yeah. I mean, they got people and their kids are in there. Well, because five there's, years old. there's continued growth. I mean, and I think that that's the thing that is, is and, and those summers in any field and that group. Yeah. So then when when yours came around and you know you're just obviously taking what you get the first year, um, there's not going to be as much as a level of, of commitment, right? Correct. Uh, but it was crazy because then the guys who do come in the fall when school starts, it's twice as hard for them to make the team because you have people who put yeah. in commitment. Yeah. And most likely, that usually that's not an issue because the ones that were there year-round have already uh, uh, skill-wise achieved right. uh, such a And I think level. the same thing applies for, for Spanish or for any any True. any coursework. Repetition is, you, you is gotta, the mother gotta, of all you skill. Gotta, you got to keep going. You got to yeah. keep going. And sometimes discipline is going to beat intellect. I mean, yeah. I think you could be a really smart kid, but if you kind of detach from the process of learning, you go, you're going to have to make up for that. And you know, and for the kids who continue learning, so you know, I'm always trying to to find things how to keep kids connected over the summer. And it's difficult because you know the kids are tired, and you know, like, summer comes, and you just want to like you know relax and not do a whole lot. Right, right. I'm trying to get this little wizard to see if this improves our kind of. Oh no, those are effects. I thought I was gonna, <laughs> I thought I was gonna do something. Um, but awesome, Mr. Diaz. Uh, well, for, well, you're awesome for 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 doing this, and we. I mean, we hang out. Oh, I'm just happy that that you know you met up with me during. Uh, you know, any any time we'd go by stuff, we'd evergreen just have lunch, see how things are doing. Uh, you mentioned San Jose Project. Uh, I think it was Jennifer and a few others. Patrick Wong. Uh -huh, Patrick. Put, I remember Patrick. Uh, yeah. They, Chris, they put yeah. that together and they approached me, you know, asking if I would like to sponsor and donate. And I think we did that about four years now. But um, I think that that's wonderful and, and that's so awesome. Not not only to give back, but we went. We basically you were part of it and was nice enough to come out with your families every year. We pick a uh, school and basically just it just get together as a community and just do our best to fix it up as best we can with the resource uh -huh. that we have and uh, in life we're just like you know I, I don't want to get sappy in any way but what majority I'm not saying I'm better than anyone but majority where our constant day is take 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 how are we going to get through the day you know we got we got to do the rat race and feed our kids and pay our bills too but um, there there's no there's no explanation to the feeling that uh, you get you know, the simple things and you hold the door open for somebody you do something like that nobody's watching nobody may care mm -hmm. or not care but you know that you Correct. make a difference right. every single one of those kids in the elementary school they don't know who the hell Mr. Diaz is they, <laughs> they don't know that you've improved at all but um, somebody up there is watching right and so I want to continue to do those things and I hope oh, we that's, do that's and, fantastic no I definitely I'm on it so anytime you got a project like that that I can help or I can involve my students and my students they know that I, we do uh, food drives and we'll uh, you got like a, you got like eleven kids to show up. Yeah, Gee, that, that, that was uh, that was that was pretty neat. That was pretty and, cool. And the next time I have Mr. Diaz on, we won't even mention or talk about it now. Uh, but it, it'll be a mystery topic, and we'll, that'll be the main subject. But right now, we wanted to just get to know uh, Mr. Diaz 
for those of you um, who know, are just joining us, Mr. Diaz go way back. He's a, a Spanish teacher at uh, Evergreen Valley High School, and many of his students do know him. Um, he's overall, in my opinion, uh, just a great guy. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. Spanish uh, uh, aside. Um, the respect is quite mutual. Yeah, the, the let's see, we talked about crazy parents and students. Uh, oh, this is one that, I don't know what I was thinking last night, was uh, any new traditions I missed out on that have been really cool at EVHS? We always had battle the classes. Yeah, we still got stuff. that going. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's the heart of the thing? What, what is everybody showing up to? Well, there's yeah. something that's going on right now. I think that there's a huge effort because I think that we have grown so much. Okay. Uh, yep. to, to include the freshman class, and so okay. the freshman uh, success has become something that is that is it should be very important. And so they have link crew, so they have all these activities for the freshmen. Uh, where they come in and they see the campus and they pick oh, the Oh, kind of like it's an orientation where... Yeah, 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 okay. but it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a gigantic thing. And so that's... And, that and it's, really it's their cool. first look at correct, whether correct. they want to so go there or not. You know, so, so that kind of makes you be part of the community. So I think that there we have the ASB uh, officers and, and with Virginia, that, uh, you know, Virginia who is amazing. Is. Yeah, she, uh, is. she is. She totally is. And, and so I think that that's something that we are trying to do or that, you know, that, that they're trying to do is as a community to kind Virginia of bring Virginia will in. see this eventually. See, Virginia, we do care about you. <laughs> she knows, said, she knows we gave you a shout out. Said you're uh, awesome. And so I think that that's really cool. I, I think that I like that because I think that, again, I came from a school that, you know, that I was very central point in the community. Uh, and, and I feel like a, like a school is like a sacred place. It's mm -hmm. like a church. It's got to be uh, the same place. Because I think that that's where we all converge. That's where, you know, we have a lot of things that we can work towards uh, as a community. And so that's what is important is creating this as a community. So I think that that's the one thing that I would think is, is, is a little bit cha changed since you were there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still continue with the battle, the classes, and homecoming competition. And they you know that. And we have... Uh, we have like over 100 clubs and mm. so there's there's that, that was that was everybody. big uh, at lunch i remember there would always be a lunch thing once a year where we would have uh, um, a huge amount of clubs kind of get together correct, and do correct. their fundraising and so thing. there's there's something for everybody and, and that's the one thing that is really cool is that oh, so virginia mentioned actually over 100 or yeah. something like yeah, that yeah it's, it's that's and you know and and that the the the, the credit goes to the people who support that you know yeah. the, the the kids for who the lead people it, by the people and and the teachers who you know commit their time and, and energy to doing that uh, because it is really important. I mean, I think that in a school that is so large that I think is over 2,900 students for this coming year, or mm -hmm. 2,800 is quite large uh, in comparison to 1,600 when you were there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's going quite a lot. But I think they're trying to, to make it be so it's not you don't get lost in the shuffle because it's, it's such a huge institution. So that's that's important. So that's a that's a really positive. I remember direction. Uh, my question is not even on my uh, list. Uh, this is a, this is a tough one. We want to keep it positive, but if you're a genie, or you had your magic wand. If you could change one thing, not not just about Evergreen Valley High School, but um, of kind of our system, our curriculum uh, in general, uh, w what would it, what would it be? Uh, obviously, you're, you're probably gonna say wow. I, I can think about a hundred, oh, wow. but yeah. but you're only allowed to to choose uh, choose one. Wow, uh, what would I change? Um, I think that th there's a misconception, I think, that uh, because Evergreen is the newest school that we have, yeah. that, that everything is given to us, that, that the resources are abundant. abundant and, actually, yeah. and actually, that's not the case. I think that uh, I, I get it per year. I usually get between $150 to $200, and I have 150 students. So that's uh, you know that's a dollar to a dollar thirty something for a My student every. And so there isn't a whole lot. So so that would be. And I'm not saying that money fixes everything. Somebody uh, from Eastside it, High School District watching this, give some damn money. <laughs> and Teach so I think that more, kids. more resources will be nice because I think that that you know limits the scope of the things that you can do. Uh, and so if you want to do something creative, a lot of the times the teacher has to like be the out of pocket or go out and find the money somewhere and so that's that's the, or that's they the might be going through rough time so they don't do anything correct they can't. And, and so so you know sometimes you know that that would be one of the things uh, budget that I, that I would that would definitely change if possible right and you can we can you guys can use it in a, in a more in a more productive uh, correct Wait, are we, are we still a technology school? We don't. We got the laptops. Do we even have computer labs? And stuff uh, like so, that? so we do have computers. Uh, we have a lot of uh, Chrome carts. So those, those are a lot. But that's not just Evergreen. I think that all the, all the schools in the district. They oh, they're like stay. Chromebooks. Like Google yeah, 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 oh, Okay, yeah. nice. And so nice. There, there's being a big push for that. A lot of in, investing in technology. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get a language lab finally uh, this coming year. Something that the PTA or the PTSA has worked on for many years. So a big shout to them uh, for a the any, commitment. Any software anyone's using? I remember School Loop 
Uh, We're still using a school loop. Have yeah. we talked about that? God, yeah. we got to remember his name. Mark. Mark. Oh, yeah. Hopefully he sees this one day. But I remember it wasn't uh, economics. It was something along that line. I, I enjoyed him. It was it was a first semester when we were actually at that campus. So it had to be second semester. And then after that, I remember him you know, saying like on the last day of school, he says, hey, hey guys, I want you guys to check out school loop. I just want to talk to you guys. You know, I'm going to be uh-huh. leaving uh, because, you know, I've been working on school for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm finally going to be launching this company and, you know, it's going to go great and we're like you know naive like <laughs> juniors we're and we're like okay dude like you don't really remember I, I i barely remember but to him you know fast forward he's in our position um he probably sold that for quite a bit of money probably worked very hard on uh-huh. it and we were probably even the guinea pigs uh yeah, in the, yeah in the we first were. place to uh, see how we were reacting but it's, it's a great tool and, and again you know we're given the resources we're getting the tools and the time well, to kudos to it. him i wish him and we are you know always kind of striving to make things better for students and you know because teaching is a craft i mean i think that i I, I never want to get to the point where, uh, you know, it's March, whatever, 15, and I go, oh, I know exactly what it is. Let me open this folder, and here, kids, this is what, I, you know, I, I don't right. want to get to that point. Because right. uh, if I get to that point, then I might as well just hang it up and exactly. do something else. Yeah, evolve, uh, so, so, evolve. Right. So, so you the truly love it. Like you say, you, you show up, uh, you're evolving, you, you grow or you die, right? You, you try to. I mean, uh, definitely, you, you must. And you got to continue learning, so that's the thing that, yeah. is, that is important. All right. And so anybody who's watching uh, and say, oh, I got Mr. Diaz's test from last year. Uh, not a chance. Nah, so, yeah. <laughs> something's, something's changing. That one has changed. Um, yeah, something's changing there. I wonder, I wonder how much uh, time has expired for us. I guess uh, I shall never know this thing. 11.03 with us already. But um, I think that's an amazing place uh, to wrap up and be uploading this uh, as well. And won't be the last time that you see uh, Mr. Diaz, Sir Hernan. Diaz, uh, you know, not just an educator, but a mentor at Evergreen Valley High School, um, and a guy I can personally vouch for, and many, many others that, um, you know, has been kind of a what we need, what we desperately need um, at our schools, and, and Evergreen's a great school, so thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Next uh, alumni, or teachers versus staff game, I'm going to find a way. All right, I'm looking forward to I'm that. I'm not going to let him win, because he surprisingly <laughs> does well. I score uh, at least one basket. That's with that, but uh, this is Roman and Mr. Diaz signing out. Uh, We love you all. Take Take care. Cheers. Bye.